Hello and welcome everyone to... No, this is not a Napa Cup Series race. The season is over. Everything is done. This is how to make a stop motion. Because I made a how to make a track with Kansas Motor Speedway last season. So now is it how to make a stop motion. Don't worry. This is not spoilers if you haven't seen it. This is just I put the cars out on the track to make it look good. We have Cole here. Legible Abyss. So, first step to any... NASCAR stop motion is to have more than, let's say, about 10 die casts. To make a series, you want to have like 10 plus die cast. I'd recommend a number in between 20 and 30. One, to make it easy to push all the cars around and not take forever. And two, to also get enough cars to make it an interesting, you know, championship where anyone can win. Now, I will get on to some of the bonus stuff. Now that you can also do interaction stuff like signups, make a video on that where people can sign up for different cars. Like, for instance, Cole here, Timo T Tacos is sponsoring Cole Custer. Will be changed next season, though. Maybe. Kyle Bush is sponsored by Trevor Banana, aka my friend Corey. Um, who else? Who else? You all know your sponsors. I'm not, I really have a note. I have notes normally of who's the sponsor. Matt Benedetto is JDudeRN. NASCAR Fan 18 Forever is Ross Chastain. He's one of our best followers or most interactive followers. Friend Jordan, Minor Niner, Kyle Larson. CST31 is Kevin Harvick. You know, people sign up for this stuff. It works too. And they come back week after week to see how they did in the race. And of course, as well, you need a track. Doesn't matter how low quality it is, although higher quality does matter. One thing that does matter is all tracks must have this flex tape logo. And grandstands, they're down there. They're right there. They're not up though, to make it easier and more camera angles that are easier to see. Things to hold your phone or camera. Tripod, obviously the number one thing. Got a big tripod. And I do have a small tripod, but it's broken. So I use this thing to hold my phone. And I use this thing to make it not lopsided. And I use these boxes to raise the view when I'm using that thing. Since I don't really have a tripod at the moment. So that is what you should use when making the stop motion. Many of you may be wondering. Well, yeah, I've started a stop motion. Get those cars out of the front. Oh, they won't. But many people might be wondering... How far do I move a car when making a stop motion? I mean, if you move it too little, it's too slow. But if you move it too fast, it just becomes bad and it looks terrible. I don't know how far you move it, which is exactly why I have a ruler. And I'm going to do how far I normally move it. That is about how far? Three quarters of an inch. And I'd say one inch max so three quarters of an inch to one inch is how far you should move the cars so i am now going to take the pictures here and you could see what it looks like with the finished product make sure when you're making a stop motion that nothing gets in the way and see this block of styrofoam one last thing i need to show it comes across here or let's say here, you know, straight across these cars. That is the camera frame. So, in order to do this, let's add a couple of cars back here. Here's how you will do it. When cars, in order to reduce time and be more efficient, they don't get moved. They don't get moved. Not moved. Now they're almost in the frame. Move them up. Move them. Just like that. Easy, really, if you think about it, and way more efficient. So, you have cars in front of the camera frame. What do you do? You move them up. Once you move them up, you move these cars, you know. You move them up. Move these cars, blah, blah, blah. Move them up until you eventually get done with the camera shot. Then you move them back if you move them too far to a spot that's reasonable. And I've noticed you could also cheese and you know, when you're done with the shot, move them up a little bit more just to be more efficient. 
It works, trust me. <laughs> I did that multiple times during the Kansas race. Most notably, you will see I did a flyby of the field like right here in turn one. The leader was about here when I got done and I moved them to about here. So, yeah, you could do that. Sorry that the frame is now smaller, but I can't really do that because my editing app, InShot, you can see it right there in the middle bottom. It is like this. So, yeah, you're going to open it up. When you go in, you can select all your photos by going to photo. I'm not going to. You can see my eye right there. Select all you want in order. Then hit this button and it will import it. When you get in, you should get something that looks like this. With the first picture of your stop motion. From here. Oh, and as well, when you're selecting the photos, make sure you go from bottom to top. Or else it'll be backwards if you go from top to bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to select the first photo. Go to duration. Click it. Take the duration, move it all the way down to one tenth of a second. Hit duration, apply to all, or the double check mark. When you're done, you should get this. And that is a good stop motion. What I did for the first season was I did three tenths, and this is what I got. Hang on. Quite trash. Then midway through the second season, I went to two tenths, which is better, but still not fast enough. One tenth is where you want to be. So after you're done with that, you could import it. Get rid of the ad by closing the app. Hitting back in, selecting it. Take this, import it. Once it's in, you can go to sticker. Get something off the web, mostly, or get like a PNG or just a random color. Take it, expand it, put it at the top. Hit this arrow to click clip beginning or drag it. Go to edit and you could go to the transitions. I like to use these transitions the most you will see. And same thing for text. Hit the text icon, type what you want. Lap 1 of 5 we'll put. Again, transition it. Make sure to select the text on top of the box. If you select this box at all after, it goes over. Once you're making the stop motion, make sure to upload it before putting graphics over it and putting the full video in. Because... If you don't, InShot has an issue where oftentimes the graphics will start to show up too quickly, and I did not realize that in a couple of my earlier stop motions. So that's an issue. You can also add pips, which is you could take a smaller video, like I'll take my eye. You could do this for like replays or separate cameras. Put it down in the bottom corner like that. This is... I'm going to delete that, though, because I don't want that there. So, yeah, what else is there? You could delete stuff. You could change the volume. Oh, yes, audio. You could extract, an, you could extract audio from a video, or you can import audio. When you import, you just click it and hit use. I'm going to extract audio from a video. I just got these from YouTube. Now, the credits all go out to the users who filmed that. I should probably put that in the comments once I remember. Or not the comments, but the description once I remember. And yes, what you're going to do is you're going to select the video you want. Take it. Trim it down to what you want. Save it. And hit OK, and that'll work. Or you could just click the check if you're never going to use it again. I recommend saving it if you know you're going to use it, and this is what you get. You can also, louder, quieter.
quieter. Make it quieter if you're going to have voiceover, so that way you can actually hear your voice. And then there's the record option, which you could hit to record. And you can make that louder. And yeah, you could also make it a 16 to 9 ratio for YouTube. Things like that. Could also speed it up. But you don't want to do that, obviously. Could slow it down as well. For a replay, what you would do is you would turn it down to like 50. So you get that. And it's quite easy. There's a watermark normally, but you could hit an X and it just goes away, kind of. You could duplicate your stuff. If you want to do a zoom, you can use this crop feature and crop it. Make sure to hit 16-9 ratio. Um, you could rotate it if you really wanted to, but that's kind of <laughs> dumb in most circumstances. You could cut it in half by using the split feature and then deleting it. You could also filter it. Like this. Oh, that's premium. I don't pay for premium. This is like stuff you see in ear rate montages. Oop. Boom. Fade. You can make an ear rape montage. Now. Highlights. Shadows. Hue. You could change the hue. Uh, vignette. That's like the darkness on the sides. Of course, it doesn't show up. Vignette. You could sharpen it. You can make it grainy. And film green. This is new. I haven't seen this yet. You've officially made an ear right montage. Yep. And I think that'll just about wrap it up. So if you enjoyed, make sure to hit the like and subscribe. Season 4 of the Napa Cup series will begin in February, I believe, on the 15th. Have a good day. Goodbye. Yay.